Hey there guys, how's it going? Uh, so the Riku EX medal is already here, uh, bringing with it the third batch of EX medals. That means that they are officially on the way. Uh, so as we've seen before in the past, the first wave started with Cloud EX. We had a really, really big banner where the pull rate was insanely low. Uh, no one was getting him, but the lucky few that did were extremely powerful for a while. This is a little bit different. Well, sorry, well, when Sephiroth EX came along, it brought along the second wave. It was extremely difficult to get, to get Sephiroth and those that had him were extremely, extremely powerful for a while. This is a little bit different because in terms of like raw aggressive power, I still think Sephiroth actually has Riku beat a little bit, um, but we're gonna talk about that in a second. This is a really, really interesting medal because it complements the other AX medals extremely, extremely well. Uh, so we'll talk about what it does. Obviously it's an upright power medal uh, with a pretty decent multiply. You can see there with, not that it's possible, but with zero dots, it goes from 1.62 to 303. Um, the lower case in every case here is going to be when you have pretty much no HP and the higher case is when you have like full HP which you should be having just about all the time. Um, with full dots but unguilted it's uh, 3.4 in multiply at max HP and if you're able to guilt the thing to 180% it's going to be hitting with a 9.52 multiplier. So just real quickly let's compare that to Sephiroth EX really quickly. You can see here, um, forgive me because it's a bit of an older template, uh, but the 11.04 uh, number that you see there is representative of the metal being fully guilted at 180%. So it's actually, this third batch of metals is a bit weaker in terms of raw multiplier power than the second set. Uh, and the reason for that is, well, I'll talk about that in, in just one second. Okay, so I believe this metal is designed to help the uh, help really benefit the power of your really stronger metals. So what it does is it lowers the enemy's power-based defense by four tiers for one turn, and really importantly, the general defense down of all the enemies by four tiers for one turn. You can see it only costs one gauge, it's a tier six, and it's uh, a all area of effect attack metal. Um, so that negative general defense down is absolutely huge. This is a Colosseum metal through and through. This is what's going to carry the big players up higher and higher and higher. For my Colosseum game right now, the way I advance is I pack general defense down onto absolutely every single metal that I can, and then I pray that I have anything left to actually do some damage by the end of my Keyblade. By the time I stop dealing one damage, then that's when it's like, okay, I can actually start attacking now. And by that point, I only have like two, like one or two, maybe three metal slots left. Um, and so a metal like this, where you get negative four general defense down in just one metal, you know, you combine that with a copycat metal and suddenly bang, the enemy is completely sapped of all its defense. Um, I really, really like this third batch of metals just because if you were to get just one of them, I reckon it would help out your Colosseum game so much. Uh, obviously, each batch of EX medals basically does the same thing, just with a different attribute. At least, that's what we've seen so far. Um, so, spoilers, I suppose, but the... Close your ears real quick, if you don't want to know. The magic magic equivalent to this medal is Malusha EX. Uh, it's a reverse magic. And the speed equivalent is a Illustrated Kingdom Hearts 2, Sora and Riku, basically with an illustrated screenshot, almost, of the final battle between Riku, Sora, and Xemnas. It's actually a really, really sweet medal. Basically, they all do the same thing. Uh, the only difference is the speed one is tier seven, so. Um, it's worth observing the pull rates for all of these. Like, the whales are gonna whale. They're gonna run out immediately and try to do as many pulls as possible. I always advise in cases like this to just wait. Just wait and check out the pull rates. If they seem really, really good, and you can, you can kind of gauge that. If it's like a few hours or even a day or two have gone past and only a couple of people have pulled one, compared to, let's say, last month, where people seem to be pulling Shion's semi-regularly and Roxas's fairly frequently for the last two EX medals. Um, if it seems just on appearance to be better or worse than that, make a decision for yourself on whether you want to pull just purely on, I want the EX medal. Um, I would never advise doing that. I would never advise expecting to get an EX medal because even at their most common, they're still pretty rare, if that sentence makes sense. <laughs> Um, I'm going to talk about best keyblades again in a second, but I think I want to retire that section and go into something a little bit more in depth. But obviously, uh, uh, Fenra is the upright, uh, the upright power keyblade. Very, very, very appropriate for that. Uh, Dark Nord does have that one uh, upright power slot at the front of the keyblade, and uh, I believe Fairy Stars does as well. Um, but let's talk about. Okay, so I kind of want to bring this in instead. It's basically my like example setups to show the kind of potential these things have and where I think they should be placed in a Keyblade. You can feel free to disagree with literally all of this. It's just my sort of really, really basic summed, down, summed up uh, 
way of saying, if I had medals like this, is this something I might try and do? So I'm trying to basically get the most amount of buffs out as possible. If I had a medal like Sephiroth EX and Riku EX, this is what I would do. So at, at the top there you can see um, we've got the little uh, configuration for the Fenrir Keyblade and the Dark Knight Keyblade down there. Um, it's a little bit hard to see, but it really doesn't matter what the multipliers are, it's mainly just the attributes that you have to worry about. Um, both screenshots here are taken from a, a Fenrir and Dark Knight at level 35, or plus 35 respectively, just in case you're wondering where the numbers come from. If this was me, and I was trying to go into, let's say, Colosseum, right? I want to be lowering the enemy's general defense down as quickly as possible, and that way, in theory at least, all the rest of my medals can actually do, deal some pretty decent damage. So, at the front of my Keyblade, I'm going to have 0.2 Kari both times, pretty, pretty much a guarantee in almost any Keyblade setup I'm ever going to do, to be honest. If I had a Pride Land Sora, I might pop that in there instead, especially if it had extra cast. In fact, in fact if I had a Pride Land Sora with extra, uh, double, extra attack or double cast, I'd be having that on pretty much every Keyblade there was anyway. Um, and next, I'd probably put Dark um, uh, Riku EX. Not Dark Riku. I'd probably put Riku EX next, and you might be saying, well, why wouldn't you put him towards the back of the Keyblade? Like we discussed before, his multiply is a little bit lower than like a Sephiroth the X, for example. And if we get this general defense down buff out early enough, then the rest of our medals, in theory, should be able to actually do some damage to the enemies. Whereas like in my, in my case right now with my Colosseum, I typically struggle to do damage by, at least where I'm at right now, I'm pretty much not dealing damage for the first one, two, three, sometimes even four medals. Like we've got a pet slot now, um, so we have up to six slots. But sometimes I'm not even dealing damage to, you know, the 4th, maybe 5th, um, simply because the enemy's general defense is so high. So, if we go ahead and remove that general defense, or at least a massive chunk of it with Riku there, and then we use a copycat metal to follow up, we're at pretty much full strength in terms of general attack up, and the enemy has literally no power-based defense or no regular defense at all. Then we come in with the big boys. Again, if I had Sephiroth the X, this is probably what I'd do. On that beautiful little fourth slot right there, I'd pop Sephiroth bang right there because all, every single buff that he does is be beneficial to you except the general defense down debuff. You've already got enough of that. And the power, I guess suppose the power down debuff as well. You don't need that. But the general strength up, he fills that in, takes you up to seven. The power based strength up, he takes you up to plus five. So think about it by this point. By this point right here, so four medals down on your Keyblade, you are fully maxed out in general attack. You are 5 out of 7 maxed out in power based strength. The enemy has 0 power based defense and 0 general defense. Okay, they're at negative 7 and negative 7. You are hitting like a friggin' truck and you're only 4 medals in. We are, in Coliseum could bring up the 6, right? So next, I'm going to bring in a really, really strong, probably single target medal. Um, assuming there's anything left on the field at this point. There's probably not going to be. But assuming there's anything left on the field. Um, you either want to hit it, well, it depends what you're versing, of course. If you're versing a really, really strong single target metal, then why not... Actually, no, you know what? No matter what you're versing, you may as well go in with the highest multiplier you possibly can, even if they don't give you any good buffs. Say, there are some really, really strong metals out there, like, let's say, let's say Vanitas SP. This is a metal that I really wanted to talk about. I'll talk about that more in Dark Knight. But Vanitas SP hits with a really nice multiplier, but it doesn't actually give you any additional buffs for using it. Um, same with other metals like, one sec, it was 0 0.2 Terra, I couldn't quite think about it. Uh, 0 0.2 Terra is basically the same sort of metal. It's a metal you can go in and hit really hard with, but it doesn't give you any buffs. But at this point, you've pretty much hit the cap already, so what do you need extra buffs for? You really don't. You may as well just go in and hit super hard with the highest multiplier you possibly can. Um, so I've got Illustrated Goofy on the end there, just as a metal to show it's a sync well, it's a random target, but if you're only versing one target, it's effectively a single target metal with a super high multiplier. Um, and that's all you really need at that point. You're just going to crank out as much damage as you possibly can. Um, same with Dark Nord down the bottom there. You, you probably noticed Oogie Boogie as a copycat metal. Obviously, we don't have a copycat metal of Oogie in our game. It might come for Halloween. Who knows? Like, they just put up the Halloween decorations in, the, uh, in our version of the game. If they were ever going to bring back this medal, it could be now, I suppose. Um, <laughs> who knows, it could even be an event medal. That's that's not going to happen. Not going to happen. But if you aren't familiar with the Japanese version, basically Oogie Boogie is a... It's actually a tier 4 uh, reverse power copycat medal that copies the medal in front. Um, so if they were to bring him out in our version, I'd assume they'd probably buff him up to tier 5 or probably 6, honestly. Um, or else he'd be... Not, not irrelevant, but you'd probably miss him.
because no one's going to be pulling for a tier 4 anymore, certainly not. But on Dark Knight, for example, um, you'd probably want to use... Honestly, I've got, I've got 0.2 Kari there, but you'd probably want a double cast Pride Lance Sora, to be perfectly honest, simply because Dark Knight needs the gauges. Um, so I'd have a boosting, like a strength boosting metal at the front, like Kari, for example. Same again, I'm going to take down the enemy's general defense as quickly as possible, and then I'm just going to hit him home with double Sephiroth EX through Shion copying Sephiroth and then Sephiroth itself. And then in the pet slot, again, you are literally at the buff cap. Take whatever is the biggest multiplier that you have and just throw that in the back. Um, <laughs> what else do you need? Really not much else you can do. Okay, so along with Riku EX, uh, this banner also introduces uh, Aqua EX, interestingly enough. Uh, a lot of people, if you're keeping up to date with the Japanese version, should be going, hey wait, isn't that supposed to be Neku coming out with uh, as the five pool mercy alongside Riku? And uh, you would be correct, but the last batch of EXs show basically there are no guarantees. There are no guarantees in the order of the medals being released and what exactly they're going to be tied to. So like I mentioned before, um, there's really no guarantee that Neku is going to be the mercy for Riku EX, and surprise, surprise, it looks like it's going to be, it is, uh, Aqua. Um, Aqua's a little bit easier to kind of talk about just because her effect is very straightforward. It's a, a lowering the enemy's general base defense by two tiers for two turns. The only difference between this medal and Xion, uh, Final Form Xion, is that it's a single target medal versus a a single target uh, versus a all targets medal. Um, the multiplier on this though is absolutely ridiculous. If you're able to fully guilt this thing at 180%, a 15.15 multiplier. I've seen people asking questions on the Reddit, going like, "What's the, what, surely all single target medals are worse than area of effect medals? You know why?" Why would you want to have an area of effect medal when you could have, you know, a big hitting single target, like a single target medal? The reason is because the multipliers are typically much higher, 15.15. This is the kind of medal that I'm talking about. When I say, um, you've got all your buffs set up already, just hit hard with the highest multiplier that you can. This is that kind of medal. This is, this is that ridiculous kind of medal that I'm talking about. Um, actually speaking of that, other, other really powerful medals like, let's say Illustrated Terra B, while we're talking about this medal right here could fit really nicely on the back of that um, that setup I was talking about before. Anyway, um, Keyblades that this would go really nicely on, well, obviously it's an upright speed, so the one slot on miss, Missing Egg that's upright speed would do very nicely. Um, the Fairy Star's upright speed slot would be very, very nice as well. And of course, Sleeping Line, you could find just about any slot to plop that on. Um, in terms of boosting up your strength alongside it, obviously, I'm pretty much using these two medals here as placeholders for whatever strength booster that you've got to go first and some way of boosting up your speed-based attributes if you want Aqua to be the one that deals your damage. And you should. Aqua is a very, very good damage-dealing medal. You probably don't want this one at the front of a Keyblade, whereas some of the medals you want to have at the front to give debuffs for more powerful medals later on. Just the fact that the multiplier on this is so high means that it's prioritized towards the back of the Keyblade. It's really going to hit hard for you if you set it up correctly. Uh, so again, a single target medal, tier 6, costs 4 gauges. So that gauge cost is quite high. Um, but man, it's it hits, hits big. Alright, so should you pull? Well, it depends what you're doing in the game right now. Um, again, if you really want to hit Colosseum really, really, really hard, then getting one of these next three uh, medals, uh, EX medals, would be very, very useful for you. Saying that though, obviously Kyrie EX, freaking god, is on the way. So before too long, everything you ever want to do, and more, will be summarized by one <laughs> glorious medal. Uh, <laughs> but saying that, if you want to have an advantage until she rocks up, which, you know, could be a couple months from now, getting one of these third third batch of EX medals will be very, very useful for you. Um, it is a really nice Mercy medal. Situational, though, obviously, the fact that it's only single target lets Illustrated Aqua B down a little bit, a little bit, but for certain situations, it's going to hit like a friggin' truck. Um, if we have, if we do run into like really, really strong single target enemies, like raid bosses even, for example, um, it's going to hit really <laughs> stupidly hard. Um, obviously, if you do a five pull mercy and you do pick up Aqua and theoretically even Riku as well, uh, high score challenge points, you're going to get very, very nice bonus score for the high score challenge. And this might be one of those high score challenges where you do get up in the rankings based solely on the fact that people are probably going to be saving up. Um, people will probably be saving up for, well, obviously Kyra EX in the future. I know I've pretty much gone into pure hibernation mode because as much as I want to do a pool nowadays, 
all the banners that I'm tempted to pull on have mercies associated with. And I got this thing in my brain where it's like, if I do one or two pulls on the banner, well then I'm only three away from the next mercy medal. And they're always really nice mercies, so it's like, it's like, oh god, I've, I've invested 6,000 jewels on a banner, let's say. I almost feel compelled to invest another 9,000 just to get the Mercy Medal. It's like a, it's like a freebie, even though it's cost me 15,000 jewels. That's how your brain thinks of it. Your brain's like, oh, it's a freebie. Ooh, 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 I've got to pull for it. Um, so this might be one of those banners where people just skip it entirely. I mean, obviously there's going to be the people who can afford to spend, will spend a decent amount of jewels on it. But um, in, for, the, for the general public, they might be hanging out for, let's say, Malusha AX or... <sighs> The third one of these that's coming out with Sora and Riku, if, God, who knows what's going to happen, but if they decide to do the 15 pool Mercy, which comes along with a Mercy pool for a different EX altogether, if people are looking out for that, then they, they, they could be saving for that. They definitely could be saving for that. Um, who knows? Who knows? That could be, that could be two weeks away, that could be three weeks away, that could be, you know, a month and a half away. Who knows? But... Eventually, freaking the Foreteller medals are going to be on their way, and <laughs> that's going to be the next drastic shift in power yet again, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, the cons are pulling on this banner. It's got, obviously, it's typical very, very subpar rates for an EX banner, typically very, very small. And if you were just like, well, I'm just going to pull on it, I don't really mind what I get so long as I do my Mercy. It'd be nice, though, if I did get, insert whatever medal here that you want to guilt. The chances of guilting the medal that you you've got at three or four dots already, is very, very, very low, obviously. You're aiming at, like, what, one in 65 chance of getting just a random premium that you have your hopes set on. Um, so it's obviously not the best if you're aiming for that. So do I think you should pull on it? In my case, I'm definitely going to wait. I'm definitely going to wait. For new players, I can't really recommend it because, yeah, you might pick up Riku EX, but I think we're at the point now where you can't re-roll and get 15,000 jewels anymore, so... If you did have 15,000 jewels that you were saving on something to pull on, I couldn't in good conscience recommend this banner because A, you could just miss out entirely on Riku EX, and B, Illustrated Aqua is a very, very good medal, but for new players starting out, you'd get so much more benefit from something like Final Form Shion, for example, that can hit all targets, or something that can boost your own strength up a little bit. I don't think a general defense down medal is for a new player because you don't really have anything to use it on, you're kind of just, you want to stick to boosting your own strength a little bit first. When you hit, when you know, when you get a decent amount of medals and you've built up your strength a bit, then Colosseum is the place to go, and you definitely need defense lowering medals in Colosseum. Saying that though, mm, yeah, Hades Cup, you definitely need defense lowering medals for Hades Cup, and occasional like daily jewel quests, but I couldn't really recommend this banner for new players. Um, and even veterans, obviously veterans, you know how what to do by now. Are you going to sit around and wait for the Foretellers or Kyrie? Maybe you'll take a couple of YOLO stabs at banners like this and see how you go. You know, it's going to be up to you to decide. In my case, I don't think I can pull on this banner. I might do a YOLO pull on a one or two pulls for uh, the Sora forms, just because I'm so close to getting an uh, Illustrated Goofy guaranteed, and I'd really like at least one copy of that. So, we'll see. And if I, if I invest 6,000 jewels on that banner, then there's definitely not going to be enough to go around. Oh, God, and those avatar boards as well. Attack Beast 4 Max with Lux Plus in an avatar board now. I want to buy... I want to buy them both, but I might just be smart and just get the one, because if that skill's out now, it could possibly be out again pretty soon. Anyway, guys, uh, let me know what you think. If you are going to pull, let me know how it goes, and definitely post that in my Discord. Um, if you have any advice for new players, old players, you know, whatever you like, feel free to put it down in the comments. And, uh, yeah, all the best, guys. I'll catch you later. Bye.